So Warner Brothers is out of the picture. So what does Paramount's future mean for Star Trek? And who is the most likely contender to buy the great studio? Welcome to Sidetrack, your sci-fi TV and movie channel. So as I suggested, oh God, a couple of weeks ago now, but has finally been announced and, you know, is out in the mainstream media, Warner Brothers are no longer interested in buying Paramount. They were priced out of this deal pretty much as soon as it leaked that the merger was moving ahead. And, well, as soon as other people got involved, other companies that were willing to put up cash as well as pay all the debt, Warner Brothers were really out of the picture. They were happy to take on the debt, but then what they were not happy to do was pay $30 billion, i.e. $15 billion for Paramount and take on the debt. So they were priced out of the deal. And it's officially now been announced that they are no longer moving forwards with a merger plan. At the moment, the front runner, I'm being told, is Skydance. And they are the ones that are actually now currently doing all the due diligence and moving towards actually doing things like putting all the money up and actually proving that they have the money to pay for what they're being asked. So what do we actually have at the moment? Well, the way this is going to work and the only way this can work at the moment is that a company needs to come in and buy the shares, um, the controlling shares of Paramount, i.e. they actually need to buy the shares from um, National Amusements. That will give them a controlling interest in Paramount Global. Paramount Global owns CBS and Paramount and all the subsidiaries. I am being told that Skydance are only really interested in the movie side of that. And the chances are that at some point in the future, once the sale is final and got through FCC and all that sort of thing, that they will look to sell CBS. Now that is a problem if you like Star Trek, because Star Trek is owned basically by Paramount and CBS. CBS owned the TV rights, as it were, and Paramount owned the movie rights. This is why we had a lot of problems when Viacom and CBS split a few years ago and then re-merged. This is why we're talking about the potential for something called Star Trek Studios, that Paramount are actually being investigating whether it would be possible to buy out Alex Kurtzman from um, Secret Hideout, who currently run all the TV shows, you know, they actually produce Strange New Worlds and they will be producing Academy, they're producing C um, Section 31, etc. Uh, and actually um, create this Star Trek Studios, this separate entity that will own Star Trek as an IP. That will then act as a subsidiary of Paramount Global and could, once CBS is maybe split from Paramount, actually be... Um, positioned to either stay within Paramount if um, Skydance wanted or go with CBS if that's what they want to do and sell it as an, an extra IP. I'm being told that that major plan of Star Trek um, Studios basically was in line for the Warner Brothers deal. The way I'm being and, and this explained to me is that actually negotiations and planning over the last six months or so, so have all been aimed towards the Warner Brothers deal. That's what Paramount bosses were expecting. That's what a lot of the planning, etc., has been aiming towards. And now they're in a no man's land. They don't know what's going to happen because all of these other companies, including the buyer and guy that owns the Weather Channel, even though I'm being told that's not a particularly serious option at the moment. And the understanding over on the Paramount side is they're not doing that due diligence. They're not doing all that legal stuff that they need to do to be able to like prove that they have the resources, the assets to actually make the purchase, etc. There's lots of legal things and lots of legal hoops you need to jump through to be able to prove you can actually, you know, pay up the money. So, um, but Skydance are actually doing that and they do have the finances in place to do it and the assets, etc. to cover the debt. So... At the moment, Paramount considers Skydance to be the only serious contender. There are other, a couple of options as well, but really is between Skydance and Byron and his um, conglomerate of investors. So, Skydance have proved that they know how to make a movie. They've been a pretty good studio for the last decade. 
they are very interested in going to the next level, um, which is something Paramount allows them to do. They're not, however, TV people. The problem Paramount have is that there's been no long-term con conversations with Skydance like there have been with Warner Brothers, a relationship they've had for a very long time. So they don't know what Skydance are going to want them to do. So they're kind of in a holding pattern. They've kind of realized they can't really move forward with any major plans because they don't know what Skydance are thinking. And that is going to be a problem for Star Trek. So basically what they're going to have to do is plan without thinking about the takeover now. They're just going to have to move forwards with their, whatever they decide to do. And this is going to probably include Star Trek Legacy. But I'm thinking there'll be some clarity by the time they get to that. Because obviously Star Trek Legacy, I've told you, has always been in Paramount's mind. It's something they want to do. Um, the idea being that it'll be officially sort of greenlit and go to development once they're done with Academy, the first season of Academy. At the moment, that's not in any active development, but the plan is that it will be. And there's already agreements with Amazon um, to basically partner with that and to help finance it. The next stage, though, is going to the green light. And they, they basically are just going to have to go ahead with the current plans because they don't know what Skydance are going to do. The problem is that once Skydance do come in, they might have completely different ideas what they want to do with Star Trek and lots of other properties like Yellowstone. And we're going to have to see what happens with that. I am being told, though, that now it's more likely that there will be a merger for Paramount Plus with Comcast and that basically Peacock and Paramount Plus are very likely to be merged within the next year. And that is actually something that Skydance would support. Now, the previous idea was that Paramount... Max and Netflix would basically merge and that Netflix would manage those three channels. I'm actually being told that Skydance won't be supporting that and they would much prefer instead to go with um, the Comcast and Peacock merger idea. Um, the feeling generally is that the content sort of fits together better and that Peacock hasn't really got a very good international um, presence and that they could basically piggyback what Paramount have done in the last couple of years and just merge those two. I hope they come up with a better name because Peacock is a stupid name and um, they need something better. I hope they just stick with Paramount Plus, to be honest, and just stick with that, but we'll see what they do. Um, Max will probably still be merging with Netflix. This idea of the Max, Netflix and Paramount Plus um, arrangement was always uh, around when Warner Brothers were considering the sale. Why did they want to do it? Warner Brothers saw it as a very easy way to cut costs and get a little bit of money in. And that is basically their business model, model at the moment. Cut costs, get cash in. So Max will probably still be going over to Netflix at some point in the near future. So for Star Trek, we are in a no man's land. We don't know what the next step is. But as soon as basically Skydance get through this current due diligence, this could happen very quickly. I'm being told the finances are there. There is a very keen seller and a very keen buyer. It will give them control of the assets. Once it then gets through FCC, which, to be fair, will be very rapid because Skydance and Paramount are different enough in the studios that it really isn't. There isn't really a competition problem. It should, it, it might not even have to go to the FCC at all, I'm being told. Um, but if it does, it should be a very rapid agreement. It's basically a smaller company buying a bigger company. So it really shouldn't be a problem. Um, it's not like when Disney bought Fox and they were saying, well, this is almost the two biggest studios merging. This is a problem for competition. It's not like that. So it should be pretty much straightforward. It could happen very, very quickly. And then once they've got the controlling assets, then they have to jump through all the legal hoops of deciding what they want to do and actually moving forwards with it. So for Star Trek, we're in a no man's land, but hopefully we'll get clarity pretty quickly. Um, get into the comments, guys. Don't tell me what you think. Is Star Trek at risk? Are the other amazing properties of Paramount at risk? Or is Skydance actually a company that have shown us they know how to make good entertainment and actually, I think, will elevate Paramount, particularly the movie side of things, over the next decade? Get to the comments and tell me exactly what you think. 
If you are new to the channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. It really helps us out and you'll never miss any of our new videos. Also, you can go to patreon.com forward slash sidetrack where most of our new videos do appear first and you get to see them without the adverts, you lucky bunnies. Go check it out. As always, please stay safe and I'll see you next time.